This video is supported by the Martha Love Association B. Welcome to the 411 Live, where we'll bring you real issues and real talk. We'll tackle issues that will impact you. And today, we'll dive into the world that many people refer to as modern day slavery. And what exactly is that? Well, stick around and join me as we uncover the deep dark world of sex trafficking. This is the 411 Live. The 411 Live. Where you can learn about issues that affect us every day. Stay the world. 411 Live. Real people, real talk. Made to help people in our community in every way. For your girl. 411 Live. Sex trafficking. The practice of being forced or seduced into a lifestyle of selling one's body for money. And this practice doesn't discriminate whether male or female, young or old, black, yellow, red or white. No one group is immune to such a practice. Now, did you know that the city of Milwaukee is considered a hub for sex trafficking? We'll explain exactly what that means. Prostitution versus sex trafficking. Are they one of the same? You know, it's hard to believe that such a practice occurs right here in our own backyard. So no, it's not just a global issue, it's a local problem as well. She rests her head on the prison to which she's chained no longer seeking refuge. She's going nowhere but to bed, after bed, after bed, after bed. Drug into this spider's web and she can't untangle herself to freedom. Drugged by desperation and overdose to a life that hardens to no avail. Beneath this ground we walk is a hill of movement in a forced direction. Gridlocked, traffic lights, red, gold, yellow, hurry, Green, stop, sex, currency, bodies, stock, fear, monopolized, auction, blocks, where virgins are the most qualified, minds groomed to be immune to pain, numb, desensitized, innocence, drain. I recently had the opportunity to sit down and talk with United States Attorney James Santel. How big of a problem is sex trafficking today? People think this is something that goes on overseas in Europe or even in Africa or mm -hmm. in Asia. It is right here in America, in the United States and right here in Wisconsin as well. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, Wisconsin, as you well know, is one of the hubs, regrettably and unfortunately, for sex trafficking. I am told reliably by some of my good law enforcement colleagues who investigate these cases tremendously well and, and follow up on them and present these cases to us for prosecution. Mm -hmm. that Wisconsin is among the top 10 or 15 states in the country where this is going on today. In Milwaukee, plainly, the largest metropolitan area in the state is at the top of that list. And what it means is that we have people who are both here and people coming into Milwaukee who prey upon our young girls and sometimes our young boys as well, sometimes bringing them from Chicago, other cities throughout the state of Wisconsin, and they provide, again, these false promises as a premise, as a predicate to get them involved in the sex trafficking. The trafficking itself is literally putting these young men and women out for sale for the, the sex that they can offer. Mm -hmm. And then we have the, the businessmen and others who will take advantage of that, pay money to the traffickers here in Milwaukee and other places, and that's where the economic benefit comes to those traffickers. But Wisconsin is a, a hub for this, and Milwaukee is certainly at the top of that list. Sex trafficking is a problem of tremendous dimension today. It is growing, and the public needs to know through these mechanisms and others about the ways in which people, typically young women, but not exclusively young women, young women and sometimes young boys are victimized by people who quite literally prey upon them, get them involved in the sex business, sell their bodies to people who would buy their uh, bodies, quite literally, and economically, the, the people who are responsible for this make money off of these victimized people. And the victims, they range from children all the way to adults? They do, absolutely. We see often uh, very many minors 
uh, young women and sometimes young boys who are below the age of 18, who are lured sometimes into large metropolitan areas by the promise of good jobs, sometimes glamorous jobs, economic enhancement, but we also see young adults who are also lured for those same purposes. Invariably, the people who bring them to Milwaukee or Chicago or Los Angeles or New York are enticing them to come to these places with false promises. Mm -hmm. And invariably, what happens is those promises are dashed and they're here in circumstances that are very, very unfortunate. And when you say Lord, because one, would, one could, couldn't even imagine how could one find themselves in a, in a situation where they are being trafficked. So when you say Lord with false promises, maybe they're, they're, they're promised good jobs and, and good financial reward for doing such things? Precisely. Um, often these are people, young people who are, are preyed upon because of their family circumstances. They may in some instances be runaways, they may not have a family connection, and so they see this person who offers them, as you said, the enticement of a great job in a big city with economic stability, with social stability, and they see that as a way to get out in a, of a future. There are also circumstances where people, again young women, who are not uh, apart from their families, who are not economically distressed, who are also lured just again by the promise of economic uh, growth and, and potential, by a glamorous job, by something that is attracted to them, even if their home situation, their local situation is not problematic. And that's the great horrific nature of this crime, which is legitimate good people brought into it by virtue of these false promises and terrible promises made to them to bring them into the cities and they are then trafficked as a result of that, that kind of work. Those that do the trafficking or the traffickers, they make lots of money. What they about do. the victims in the situation? The victims almost invariably make nothing, and that's the other part of the tragedy. We indicted a case just recently in which the trafficker himself not only lured young women to this area and recruited them for his sex trafficking business, uh, but provided them with nothing and in fact turned them into heroin addicts, mm. the ultimate uh, just degradation of the human being and the human uh, psyche and the human spirit. They not only do not make any money, but they're often uh, completely turned into dependent uh, individuals on the people who are trafficking. So they very seldom make money themselves. They may be taken care of in the sense that they're provided with some food, certainly transportation to the places where the sex trafficking takes place. They're provided with some housing, but it is certainly not the kind of, of economic stability and life stability that they were promised at the outset. They do not profit from it. The traffickers themselves uh, profit from it hugely. Who will be the voice of the children that never come above ground again? Who will be the raven to sing through the silence of their pimp normality? Who will unveil the shadow cast over an afflicted world that most find in good health? Who writes receipts for the slaves that are folded into these statistics? Who rules the minds of the twisted aroused by the tortured? Who will be the community that raises its neighbor's children? Who will house the runaways before they're seized into traffic? Who will make it their business? Who among us will unclog our senses and feel for the numb, desensitized, feeling symbolized by emoticons, apostrophes replace the tears once cried, and the eye has closed its shutter blind as this truth beams an almost too abrasive shine, 
and the heart has been calloused by keloid emotion, excess growth of scar tissue, and it seems like it has to hit home before we make it our issue. Human trafficking is a global issue that is happening locally. This is a problem that we cannot ignore. And in Milwaukee, I'm proud to say we are not ignoring it. We are making progress. Milwaukee's law enforcement officials, social service organizations, and faith-based organizations have come together with dedicated advocates and survivors to fight the problem. This is a public health issue. It's global and domestic in many ways. It is something that we know that people are forced and coerced into sexual activity, experiences that I, I can't even begin to articulate. We have to be better at understanding those that may be victims of human trafficking right in our own backyard. I had the good fortune to be uh, in front of the Las Vegas, Nevada uh, legislature and the state legislature in Nevada. And rounding out into the community in Las Vegas, I asked about the issue of human trafficking. I asked about the issue of prostitution and forced work and slavery. What shocked me was the response that I got from some of the uh, Las Vegas, Nevada legislators. They said, you know, Milwaukee is one of those cities that's a feeder city to many of the children that are here. Let me get that straight. So we think about Sin City being where everything is happening, but they're taking our very own there. So we need to deal with this issue here. Sex trafficking has hit home. It's a problem that's hard to face, yet too serious to ignore. Collectively, we can band together to fight this horrific problem. And the first step you can take is by becoming more aware of the problem. You can also learn more about all of the organizations who have band together to create the Human Trafficking Task Force of Greater Milwaukee. How do you function? How do you do what you do? I'm assuming that it's a variety of organizations that come together to make one big organization? Exactly. We meet monthly mm -hmm. for two hours, the fourth Tuesday of the month. And because we're the community response, it's an open meeting. Because it's with the city, it's an open meeting. So we're averaging about 40 people per meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's growing. Mm -hmm. But we basically come together once a month, talk about issues around human trafficking. And then we had an event around awareness in January. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing something in the summer. And we're just really wanting to galvanize so that we can eradicate human trafficking here in southeastern Wisconsin. You know, when I think about it myself, when I think of especially sex trafficking and how many times people can be judgmental and you're in your car and you're riding down the street and you see certain people on the bus stop or walking down the street mm -hmm. and they're dressed mm -hmm. in a certain kind of way and many times we can shun them or think a certain way and sometimes they're in a situation where they don't want to be in you know in and they're being trafficked and and we are looking at them in a way that, you know, that doesn't make any sense. She shouldn't be dressed like exactly. that. What does it look like for those of us who are totally oblivious to sex trafficking? What, what can you paint a picture for what it looks like? Well, it may look like the person that you would see, say, on North Avenue. It could look that way, but it's also um, trafficking, trafficking occurs on Backpage, Craigslist, you know, so it, it happens different. Um, we may think about the pimp, but there are also family members that groom their, the young to really? be tra Oh yes, to be trafficked. And the average age is 13. It's said that family members usually traffic younger, and then around 13, you would find the stranger that would be the trafficker. It's a pretty dismal, thought to think that a family member would groom mm -hmm. a person for trafficking. But it, you make a, there's a lot of money to be made. Mm -hmm. When you think about drugs are disposable, guns are disposable, and the penalties, there have been individuals that change the game and they go towards trafficking because now you have someone that could turn, let's say, 10, um, 10 Johns a day, or I was going to say tricks a day, I apologize. No problem, it okay. is what it is, and some <laughs> Turn, people would probably consider it that. Right, 10 tricks a day, mm -hmm. and the, the amount of money that can be made within a year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the pimp can make a lot of money. And um, what I hate about it is that the demand is so strong 
you know, we talk, we usually think about young women, mm -hmm. but there's a strong demand for, you know, servicing, to service the victim. Mm -hmm. Someone has to show up. Mm -hmm. As it relates to just ethnic backgrounds and things of, and the different groups of people, from your experience, mm -hmm. are you seeing a wide variety of different ethnic groups or are you seeing it more predominantly in, in certain neighborhoods? It doesn't discriminate. Mm -hmm. And I would love to take the stigma off of it. It's an African-American female, although the statistics do say that within our community there may, there may be more African-Americans, but it does not discriminate. It, does, it goes across neighborhood lines, racial, social economics. It's the vulnerable. When I think of just mental, uh, what, what it does, what sex trafficking, what human trafficking can do to a person mentally, and just this vicious cycle that it, 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 it goes into the medical field as well. And the abuse. Have you yourself come in contact with uh, women who have been trafficked? I have. Um, but when you asked, when I was thinking about that question, my mind went back to my neighborhood friend. She left in middle school. And we just knew that she was a prostitute, you mm. know? But she left in middle school. And she would come back periodically and then go back out. And because we were friends, I love her dearly, we would talk about it. And she would talk about going up north. She would talk about going across the lines. But I'm sure it wasn't another 13-year-old that picked her up. Really? You know, so we didn't have the knowledge at that time when mm -hmm. you think about um, being a victim or human trafficking. We just thought the word prostitution, that she was a prostitute. But um, all is well. There are many. When I'm in the schools and I ask the question if anyone knows anyone, easily a quarter of the people raise their hand. Really? Yes. And students know this. Students, absolutely. Can you give us some examples of some of the organizations that are part of your task force? Oh, now I said about 40 people come, so I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, it's a wide variety. Oh, it's, yes. So we're empowering. I'm glad that we're talking about it because doctors have to be empowered, nurses have to be empowered when you, they, when a victim goes into the hospital to know what to look for. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're doing some good work that's being done. Sex trafficking does not discriminate, but our women and children are affected at higher rates than other groups. But how does the woman find herself locked in? And once lured into this cycle, how can we break the chains? In this economy, many victims see sex trafficking as a means of survival. But unfortunately, most victims don't even see the money that they bring in. Where's my money? We bite our tongues and tuck our compassion beneath our corsets. We suck in our empathy to straighten our fairy tale posture. We see, but turn our heads to something more appealing. Yet the signs are everywhere. It's in the B-roll of child pornography. It's in the withdrawal of forlorn mothers who appraise heroin and their sons at equal value. It's knotted into the silk ties of wealthy businessmen who love their wives by day, but exploit the chase at night. It's in the gut wrench that grips and turns every time we feel something isn't right, yet we say nothing. It's embedded in our intuition and mutated into the DNA of the poor, the needy. It's smoking in the footsteps of children who take flight from an unloving home. Just imagine for a moment, our children, our babies, being sold into a world of sex. It's hard to believe, but a harsh reality for some. Their innocence stripped away. No time for school, no hope for the future. What can be done? I'm here now at Pathfinders as we continue on with our conversation about sex trafficking. And we're gonna focus in on our youth, our young adults, and our children. 
Pathfinders is an organization that provides a wide range of programs and services for our children who are in need. Maybe they're runaways, maybe they come from abusive relationships, maybe they just come from dysfunctional families. And as our conversation continues, I want to introduce Kathy Arney, the Vice President of Community Programs. Thank you for spending time with us today. My pleasure. When it comes to sex trafficking of our young people, how prevalent of a problem is it right here in the city of Milwaukee? It's a huge problem. Um, there, there are, um, the police can give you statistics about and information about how Milwaukee is a hub for pimps learning how to do their trade. Mm. If you go somewhere else as a pimp, anywhere else in the country, you are considered, if you came from Milwaukee, it's considered the Harvard of pimp schools. Okay, I'm sure that many of us, probably the majority of us, have seen young people out there working on the street but didn't know what they were actually doing. We, we a lot of times may judge people, we'll drive down the street and we'll see a, a, a young girl dressed and maybe very provocatively and we may snarl at her or, or say something smart, but there, there, there may be something else behind her outfit that, that she has on. So what does it look like? So the average person can may, maybe even know what's, what's going on when they see this type of person that may be trafficked at that moment. Well, when I've been on the street, what I've observed is there is a scantily clad in, in dress, but also solicitous. So it's not like they're just um, hot, warm, it's summer, and they have shorts on and a, and a halter top or whatever. But, but there, there is something more to it, maybe a very short dress, maybe, maybe stilettos, and they're looking around, they're looking for a date. They're not just hanging out with their friends. They are, they're working. Mm -hmm. So you can see it in that way. If one just sees something and they suspect that something may be happening, something is not right, can, any, can, can the average person say anything or do anything or call anyone to investigate or to get help for that young person who, who may be trafficked? Yes, you, uh, any citizen who sees something wrong can call the police, if it's a young person that they are identifying as being a minor, they could call the Bureau of Child Welfare and report that. How successful has Pathfinders been in maybe, I don't even know the word to use, in, in, in finding these young people and helping them to, to transition their life and break this horrible cycle that they may find themselves in and they don't know how to break the cycle? Yes. We've been very successful. Um, the, the youth that we have, I, it takes, it's not a sprint that you see a young person, you scoop them up, rescue them from this horrible pimp and, they're, and they live happily ever after. It takes, I mean, they have been to some degree brainwashed. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a long time for them to realize that there's other ways of thinking and they need to know that there's alternatives out there, that there are people to trust um, that will not hurt them and will not make them go have sex with strangers. Um, and so we, we just really go at this. Um, we meet the youth where they're at. Many times they do not want to leave trafficking. They do not want to leave their pimp because what they have with him is so much better than what they had at home. And that's heartbreaking as well. So slowly but surely, we really try to work with the youth and help them see alternatives for their life and provide them with whatever resources we have here or refer them to other resources. I also sat down with Donna Hippis, the Sisters Program Director from the Benedict Center. There are resources available. There is help for women. Mm -hmm. As it relates to sex trafficking mm -hmm. and prostitution, I know we've talked uh, recently about is there a difference? You have sex trafficking, you have prostitution, are they one of the same? I think there are some major differences, and especially if you look at the legal definitions, both the federal and the Wisconsin definitions, mm -hmm. uh, the definitions are somewhat different. But when I look at it, I really see that there's an intersection between the two. Hmm. And uh, so it doesn't quite fit the same definition. And when I think of sex trafficking and prostitution, 
I really think of those two circles. I don't know if you remember from school, they talked about Venn diagrams. I think it's one mm -hmm. of the few things I remember from you know certain classes that mm -hmm. I took, where you have two circles, they sort of overlap in the center, and so you have this area that they are the same. And that's what I look at, because the women that I work with may not exactly fit the definition of being trafficked at this moment in their life, but if you go back into their lives, there was that period where yes, they were. Yeah, t tell me this, because I'm thinking about this vicious cycle here. Yeah. And, and you are part, earlier in the program, we talked with the chairperson of the Human Trafficking Task mm -hmm. Force of Greater Milwaukee. And I would assume that if you pull your resources together with a variety of other organizations, that you can help women in a greater way. Do and you all work together absolutely. in that way? Absolutely, yes we do. Uh, Sojourner Family Peace Center, the uh, advocate that they have, the domestic violence advocate that's stationed in the third district, is part of a team that works with the women in my program. Um, we have nurses who come from uh, Mount Mary who come to uh, help the women and give them information and get them into uh, appropriate health care. Mm -hmm. um, we have a wide variety. UMOS comes and helps us with HIV and STD testing and information about how to keep yourself safe. No one agency can do everything mm -hmm. and it would be foolhardy to think that there's turf. Mm -hmm. There is enough problem for all of us to get involved and try to solve and so we are always looking for partners to help us. If one wanted more information on the Sisters Program or the Benedict Center, mm -hmm. where would they go? Do you have a website? Well, we do have a website. Okay. It's www.benedictcenter.org and uh, please visit the website. That website will direct you to all of our programs. And if you want more information or if you are interested in volunteering, that website will help you do that as well. Whether you choose to use the term modern day slavery or sex trafficking, it's real and it's happening now. It's planted in our backyards and landscaped into our front lawns. It's coded in the conversation of authorities and translated by the unpunished. It's here and across the street in Albania, around the corner in Zimbabwe, over the bridge to Vietnam, down the road to Brazil, a five minute walk to India, turn left in Yemen. It's in the middle lane to Portugal and run stop signs in Venezuela, make a right at Guam, take Jamaica to Costa Rica and drive up the hill to Mexico, keep straight through Texas and pay the toll in Illinois. It's constructed into the Marquette Interchange and slipped into drinks on Water Street. It's chauffeured by the glistening smiles of clandestine tyrants and inflicts road rage on the futile. It's buried in the souls that escape our perusal. It's here. And if this vehicle were to come speeding into our parked cars, would we injure? Or would we just remain numb? As we continue to educate ourselves, we will aid in the process of making a difference. I hope you've been enlightened. I'm TJ, and this is the 411 Live. To report suspicious activity, call 1-866-DHS-2-ICE. And for more information, go to www.dhs.gov forward slash human trafficking. We would like to hear from you. Email us topics or issues you would like to discuss at info at the411live.org. Follow us on Twitter. Watch us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook. Watch us on Ustream.com. Or log on to our website at the411live.org.